Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, we are in the month of August. Praise God. And listen, God has plans for us this month. Now, listen, before we go into what God has in his mind for the month of August, I want us to make a demand that the Lord commanded us to make. Are you ready? Join me as we declare these words together. Say, Father, I demand my daily bread and I receive it now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, understand something. When the Lord told us to begin to make this demand on a daily basis, you know, of course, he just gave an instruction. But along the line, the Spirit of God began to minister to me that, hey, do you know why I'm telling you to do this? Because this season, you need supernatural intervention. Praise God. And, and, and that's why it's important I share with you that the Lord is saying to me that this month of August is going to be a month of, I mean, supernatural supply for you. Praise God. Listen, you are going to see miracles happen in the area of supplies. You are going to see with ease how you're going to ride through this month. And, and that's just the beginning. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. You will begin to enjoy a new kind of grace where supply is concerned from this month. And that's because the world and things around the world is going down and Jesus is being glorified. So if you know Jesus, this is your opportunity to shine. How are you going to shine? Supernatural supply is going to be given to you. Now, as we go into what, I've, what the Lord has commanded me to share with you uh, from this week, you will begin to understand. Can we just pray? Father, we bless you. Thank you for this new month of August, Lord. Oh, we trust in your power and in your grace that is at work in us. Thank you for angels that you have released on the earth specifically for this month of August that will cause your will to be enforced and established on the earth. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, for your guiding us into all truth, even in this broadcast right now. And I declare burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, while we're praying, I saw someone with, with some terrible migraine headache, and that headache is leaving you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I mean, it's so terrible. You feel this whole area, you know, when it comes on you, this whole area, is, it's, it's so terrible. But see, the Lord has healed you. And I declare that headache is gone and it will not come back to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I've always told you, when you watch this broadcast, open your heart. Because anything can just happen, praise God. Any miracle that you need can just happen, praise God. All right, so now, I said the Lord has commanded me to share some thoughts with you this week. And we're going to begin this weekend and see how the grace of God will carry us. And because He's planned something special for you that you are going to begin to experience in this month. Listen to me. Remember, he said in Hebrews chapter 13, he says, For he has said. Now let's let's go there. Hebrews chapter 13. You need to see this. You know, I would have just read it, but the moment I just quoted it, the Lord began to minister something again to me. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. 
He says, let your conversation, in other words, manner of life, your character, let your conversation be without covetousness. Kalabayakasaya. Let your way of life be without covetousness. Why? It says, and be content with such things as you have. I want you to follow this carefully now. He says, let your way of living, let the way you live be without covetousness. Now, I've told you before what covetousness is. Covetousness is the thinking that because you have something, you are made. Covetousness is the thinking that, oh, because you've got this job and you're being paid, you know, in millions, it means, man, I can never be poor. That is covetousness. And also, covetousness is the thinking that, oh, because I don't have a good job, so my life can never be better. Until I get a good job, my life will not be good. Now, that is covetousness. So you can be covetous from the desire of owning or holding on to what you have. And then you can also be covetous with, with, with having nothing and thinking. Now, now the, the whole idea of covetousness is this, is in what Jesus said. You remember one time, the, the, the one young guy came to Jesus and he, he told Jesus, said, Master, tell my elder brother to divide the inheritance for us. And Jesus said, who has made me judge between you and your brother? And the Bible said, Jesus turned to his disciples and said, beware of covetousness. Why? Because a man's life does not consist of the abundance of things that he possesses. See, so he says, beware of covetousness. Why? Covetousness makes you think your life will be will be consisted or or your life will consist of the abundance of things that you have and jesus said that is covetousness that thinking so when a man thinks that because he's got many houses and all this investment he is made that is covetousness and also when a man feels, oh, I, I, I wish I had all this, or, or, I, or I will need to gather all this stuff so that I will be made, he is covetous also because of the thinking. Did you get that now? Now, so now he tells us here in Hebrews 13 verse 5, that let your way of living be without covetousness. What does that mean? Put away covetousness from you. Why? Because your life is not does not consist of the abundance of things that you have. Now, he is telling you here, the reason he is saying, beware of covetousness, or the reason he says, let your life be without covetousness. And then he says, be content with what you have. Now, understand something when he says, be content with what you have. He's not saying, remain at the same level. He's saying, what you have today is enough for what you need. That's exactly what he's saying. So he's not saying, um, don't, don't aim for something better. No, that's not what he's saying. Of course, if whatever, whatever you are doing, if, he, if you're doing it well, then the grace of God will be multiplied upon your life. But you see, so he's not saying, just stay on one level. Don't, don't, don't aspire for growth. No, growth is a constant thing in life. You must grow. But then he's saying, what you have today is just enough for all you need to accomplish today. Now you need to understand this. You see, because the way Jesus operated on when, he, when he walked through this earth will make you understand that truly this statement is true. Now follow the thought pattern of this scripture. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Now, did you get it? The reason he is telling you that, look, don't gather things. 
and think because of what you have gathered, you are good to go. No, it says don't do it. Rather, be content with what you have. The reason he's saying this is because he, the provider of all things, have said he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Now, do you know what that means? It means whatever you need every day, any day, he is going to give it to you. Now, if that's the case, why then do you need to stop things? Because of that thinking of covetousness. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, you want to travel and you are driving your car and then you, you now hear that on a particular stretch of road, you know, you're, you're going to be driving for about three hours and then that there is no gas station on that stretch of the road. Now, what's the, what's the normal thing you're supposed to do? Find a way to get extra gas in your car. Now, what do I mean by that? Either you fill your tank, I know that it's going to take you through that stretch before you get into that stretch of the road, or you get an extra um, gallon and put at the back of your car. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Because because there's going to be a result. Now, but then if you hear that, oh, there are lots of um, gas stations on that route that you're about to take. Now, you're not going to think of storing up gas. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, that's the same thing he's telling you. The reason he's saying, be content with what you have is because he has promised that he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Meaning, now, if I need... Now, now oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, today, all I need today may be a thousand bucks. So he's with me. And then he's going to give me a thousand bucks that I need today. Now, tomorrow, it may happen that I need a million bucks. Hey, he will give me that million that I need tomorrow. So, what does that mean then? Why then should I be troubled about storing up for tomorrow's sake? Are you getting what I'm saying? So he's telling you, hey, relax. Be content with what you have because he has promised never to leave you, never to forsake you. Mm. Now, now you begin to understand. Now I'm setting the foundation of what we're going to be dealing with this week. Now you begin to understand, you know, when the children of Israel left Egypt, and God was feeding them with manna. Now, when he began to feed them with manna, he told them something. He says, look, take just what you need for today. Don't take something extra for tomorrow. Take what you need for today. And he said, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, human beings are. Who, who humans have always been humans. Praise God. And, and some folks went and like, said, ah, huh? now that we've seen food, better keep up. Just in case we don't see it tomorrow. Just in case God decides not to show up tomorrow. And they took some extra. Now what happened by the time they checked later, it had turned to worms. Now because God have said and promised that he will be with them. That's why he told them there is no need to keep something extra. Why? Because the same way I give to you today, I'll give to you tomorrow. I'll give to you next tomorrow. I'll just keep giving to you. Why? Because I am with you. Praise God. Now, think about it. What makes people to be covetous? What makes people to gather and store? You know what the usual thing will say? Let's save for the rainy day. Now, think about it. You are trying to save for the rainy day. Meanwhile, the one who controls the rain is ever with you. Can you see the logic now? He's ever with you. So what you think you want to say for the rainy day, he is the one that is still going to supply for you. He is the one that even on that rainy day, he is the one that will give you the shelter that you need for the rainy day. So you see how foolish it is to start thinking covetousness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are you getting what I'm sharing with you now? You know, my time is up for today. Now listen, this is going to be an exciting week. And I want you to really get ready, get your hearts ready. Now look, I'm going to flow with God this week and get everything that he has in store for me. Praise God. 
God bless you. Step out. Listen, this month is going to be good for you. Praise God. So step out today with joy in your heart and celebration in your feet. Praise God. God bless you and I love you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.